from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and I am so excited that you're here with me today for another installment of Steam Creatures. So, before we get into today's topic, do you remember what all the letters in STEAM stand for? You do? Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and math. And we are going to use all of those subject areas today to, to learn a little bit more about the world of insects. So what is an insect? Well, to be an insect, the creature needs to have a hard outer shell. It needs to have three distinct body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, and it needs to have three pairs of legs, so six legs all together. Let's take a moment to look at some pictures and short movie clips about insects while we learn a little bit more. There are over one million different species of insects on our planet. Some insects have wings and some don't, but all have a few common characteristics. All insects are invertebrates, meaning they don't have a backbone like us, but rather an exoskeleton or shell that protects them. Some of these shells are hard, and some of them are thinner and soft. All insects have three parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Legs and or wings can attach to the thorax. Insects also have two antennae and six legs. If there's more than six legs, they're not an insect, such as spiders that are arachnids. Insects can have simple or compound eyes. And many insects can't hear, so they rely on their other senses to find food and avoid danger. All insects hatch from eggs, and the babies are called larvae. Some larvae look very different from the adult of that species, such as caterpillars that grow up to become butterflies. Insects have been around for over 480 million years, even before the dinosaurs. The dragonfly seen here is one of the oldest type of insects. The housefly, which is perhaps the most common insect, has variations found throughout the world. There are so, so, so many different types of insects, and they all move in different ways. Some walk, some crawl, some slither, some jump. Insects are all amazing and important. Pollinating insects, such as bees and butterflies, help the plants grow. Although some insects can be considered a little creepy, and some can certainly be pests, the world wouldn't be the same without them. And now, friends, I'd like to share a book with you about insects. This is from the Cat in the Hat Learning Library. This is On Beyond Bugs, all about insects, written by Tish Rabe, illustrated by Arstides Ruiz, and read today with permission of Penguin Random House. So let's see what we can learn. I'm the cat in the hat, and I'm glad that I found you. Right now, if you look, you'll see insects all around you. They live in the water, the earth, the sky. Just wait, and you'll soon see an insect go by. There are millions of them, and I will show some to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Most insects you'll meet have hard shells and lay eggs. They have wings and can fly, and they all have six legs. And this is very important. Spiders are not insects. This news couldn't wait. Instead of six legs, every spider has eight. Do you know what we call insect or what we call spiders? Arachnids. Similar, but different. So here we have a praying mantis, a butterfly, a grasshopper, a ladybug, which in some parts of the world is called a ladybird, and a black ant. If you look at an insect up close, you will see that its body and parts, and each insect has three. The head, the thorax, the abdomen. First the head, then the thorax, and here at the end is the longest part, which is called the abdomen. Insects cannot see all the things that surround them, so they each have two feelers to touch what's around them. An insect has feelers on top of its head, some look a lot like a thin piece of thread, while others look much more like feathers instead. Well, we wish we had feelers, but we don't have any. You can also call feelers by this name, antennae. 
Watch an insect and see all the things that it does. Some can swim, jump, or crawl. Others chirp, flash, or buzz. Birds and frogs look for insects in order to eat them, so insects work hard to make sure they don't meet them. Some, like this wasp, have bright colors that say, Don't come near me, I'll sting you, so just stay away. Well, this moth's wings are colored to look like the tree it is resting upon so that no one can see it. It's called camouflage. This spittle bug sits and he spits out a bubble. It's wet and it's cool and can save him from trouble. For when he's all covered in bubbly foam, if a hungry bird comes, it thinks well, nobody's home. Here is a riddle I learned from my mother. How's a skunk and a ladybug like one another? When danger is near, it's easy to tell. They suddenly give off a terrible smell. These busy insects are my friends, the ants. They like to eat seeds, other insects, and plants. Ants are so strong, they can lift things that weigh over 10 times their weight, and they do it all day. So if you were as strong as an ant, you would see you could lift up 10 cats in tall hats easily. Watch these honey bees, and I'm sure you'll agree that these bees are as busy as busy can be. Worker bees collect food and they keep the hive clean. They protect it from danger and they wait on their queen. She must stay in one place. It's her job to lay dozens and dozens of eggs every day. When a bee has discovered where food can be found, she goes back to her friends and she starts dancing around. First she wiggles, then she waggles and circles and so all the other bees know which direction to go. We can grow lots of flowers with help from the bees. They store dust from each flower in the back of their knees. This dust is called pollen. The next flower they find, when they land on it, they leave some pollen behind. And this is called pollination, and it makes the new seeds that grow even more flowers, which everyone needs. Some insects, I know, can be unwanted guests. Fleas, flies, and mosquitoes can really be pests. Fleas live on cats, dogs, rats, hamsters, and mice. Their bite is quite itchy, which isn't too nice. But they're wonderful jumpers. Why, if we were fleas, we'd jump over a house, and we'd do it with ease. Have you ever wondered, why does a fly buzz? Well, it beats its wings fast, and each time that it does, its wings make a sound you can hear in your ear, and this sound lets you know that there's a fly flying near. There's a fact about flies that we both thought was icky. They can walk upside down since their feet are so sticky. I don't think mosquitoes are very polite. When they're hungry, they land, and they sting when they bite. But it's only the female mosquitoes that do. Male mosquitoes will never come bothering you. Sure. Caterpillars do something you might think is strange. They start out as one thing, and then one day they change. Some spin a small house on a branch just like this, and this home that they make is called a chrysalis. If you watch it, you'll see when a few weeks go by, it turns into a beautiful new butterfly. Here's a quick fact that we both thought was neat. Butterflies can taste food with their feet. On warm summer evenings you may see the light of fireflies flashing off and on in the night. They're like tiny flashlights that float in the sky and if you want to catch them it's all right to try. Use a jar with a lid, watch them glimmer and glow, then open the jar up and let them all go. All day and all night on the ground in the air, insects are moving around everywhere. It's important for us to keep learning about them. The world that we know couldn't go on without them. The butterfly, ladybug, ant, and the bee make everything better for you 
and for me. If you would like to go on a bug hunt, we are having one this Saturday at the Pleasant Hills Arboretum. So on Saturday, July 24th, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m., we'll meet up at the gazebo and then Chad Gore, who is an entomologist that lives in the Pleasant Hills area, will lead us on a nature hike while we look for bugs. The library will provide bug nets so you can catch some bugs safely. If you would like to take any bugs home, you need to ask a grown-up first and then bring a container to transport them. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me, Miss Danny, at danilo at einetwork.net. See it right here. And now, my friends, it's time for STEAM! We do have some STEAM kits still available in our lobby, but they went pretty fast this week. Luckily, most of the materials in our STEAM kit are things you probably have at home, so if you were unable to get our kit, you just need the following items. Two pipe cleaners, two index cards, a paper towel, cheese balls, or cheesy poofs. Anything that has a cheesy residue will work. And then individually wrapped candies. We've provided peppermints, but anything that comes in a wrapper will work. So now let's head over to the craft table to learn how to do our two different experiments for this week. For our first experiment, we're going to learn all about pollination. In addition to the items I already mentioned, you're also going to need a marker and a small bowl. Let's start by using our marker to draw some flowers all over your paper towels. You can do one big flower or several little flowers. It's up to you. Ta-da! And your flowers don't have to be perfect. Mine certainly aren't. Now, in your small bowl, you're going to put your hard wrap candies at the bottom. In our kit, we provided you with either three or four, depending. But if you are taking some from home, you can put as many as you'd like. Make sure they're laying flat on the bottom of the bowl like this. Now take your cheesy poofs, your cheesy balls, your cheesy curls, whatever cheesy item you're using, and pour them right on top. Make sure they cover those candies. Set the bags aside. Now we're going to turn our hand into an insect using our pipe cleaners. Now if you were doing this at home and you were unable to get the kit, you don't have to have the pipe cleaners. You can do it just with your hand and it'll work just as well just maybe not quite as much fun. Take your, paper, your pipe cleaner and you're going to wrap it around a finger. You can pick whichever finger. I'm going to go ahead and do my pointer finger and wrap it around and then make little insect feet. Take your other pipe cleaner and wrap it around to make curly antennae. Ooh, I'm going to wrap that one more time. And you know what? I'm going to twist my antenna like this. There we go. There's no wrong way to do this. And so now you have a finger bug. I think I'm going to pretend mine's a bee. Now, using your hand with your fingers all closed in together, you're going to reach in, dig around, and pull out one of those hard wrap candies. And then you're going to take your hand and wipe it on that paper towel. Okay? And then let's do it again. I got it. And then wipe it again. So what we're doing here, friends, is we're pretending that the bowl is one flower and that the candy is the nectar and the cheese balls are the pollen. Our paper towel is more flowers, obviously, but the ones that we drew. And if you look at it closely, you can see all that cheese dust. Let's get a closer view so you can see it better. we're going to focus on the water strider insect, which is a type of insect that can walk across water. 
there are other and types of insects that can kind of skim across the water and the principles that we're learning and exploring here apply to them as well for this experiment you're going to need the two index cards that were provided in your kit a container of water to test them on a pencil and some scissors now we provided you with two index cards so that you can do one and then test a different design for the other but if you have index cards at home feel free to do this experiment as many times as you would like. Start by folding your index card in half, like so, and then fold the bottoms up just a little bit, about an inch or a knuckle's worth on both sides, so that if you open it up, we have a triangle that can stand. Now, use your pencil to draw some feet designs on the flat part here. You can do triangles, circles, squares, zigzags, whatever you'd like. I think I'm going to start with triangles. Once you have your design drawn, it's time to cut it out. All right, my design's ready to test. Let's see if it'll float. Not bad. Triangles work. Now, as I'm observing it, I can see that the feet are starting to go down. Let's get a closer look for you so you can see what I see. So the triangles worked pretty well, although it's starting to sink. So I want to try one more design. Hmm, what should I do this time? I decided to try circles. Let's see how the circle compares to the triangle. Let's get a little closer so you can see what I see. lucky both of my designs worked it's pretty awesome if your designs didn't work don't get discouraged science is all about trying and trying and trying again until you can find the perfect solution well friends I hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of steam creatures join us next week when we go under the sea to learn about different animals that live in the ocean and don't forget, this coming Saturday, July 24th at 10 a.m., we'll be doing a bug hunt and nature hike at the Pleasant Hills Arboretum. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to give us a call at 412-655-2424. As a reminder, the library is open, so feel free to come on in, say hi, check out some materials, and, you know, have a good time. Until I see you, friends, stay safe and have a good day. Bye.